Hi, I'm Jim Hilgendorf. You know, today I'd like to talk a little bit about religion and our religious ideas and beliefs and how they really play out in society and around the world. You know, one of my books, uh, it's called uh, Maybe We Need a New Religion. And I'm not here just to promote this book, but I bring this up because uh, this, this idea, maybe we need a new religion, came to me when I was reading an article a couple years ago about a 10 or 11 year old boy who was reading and seeing on television about all the violence going on in the Middle East between Christians, Muslims, Jews. And he stated to his parents, he said, maybe we need a new religion. So, um, you know, I'm just uh, going back, I'm thinking about a few items in history. There's uh, Leo Tolstoy, for instance, the great Russian writer, author of War and Peace and Anna Karenina. Uh, Tolstoy was an uh, ardent Christian. He believed in Christianity and he based his life upon the teachings of Jesus, whom, by the way, he felt not to be a god, but a man. And uh, especially the Sermon on the Mount, which talked about nonviolence and utter non-resistance to evil. Tolstoy based his life upon this, as his, his Christian life. And for this, he was repeatedly uh, ostracized, criticized, and uh, uh, railed against by the Russian government, which at that time, uh, interestingly, was like uh, bedfellows with the Orthodox Russian church. Tolstoy was actually excommunicated by the church. And Tolstoy, throughout his life, though, stood up for this principle of nonviolence and was able, through his own personal uh, example, to profoundly influence many people around the world, including Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. in their efforts for nonviolence. So, uh, at the same time, uh, looking back through our history, uh, our Civil War, which was fought uh, about one main principle, which was slavery. And was this a right principle or not? We had another uh, great writer uh, who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, Elizabeth, uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe. And uh, the main principle behind this book was that uh, the the, uh, the principles of slavery and the principles of Christianity were totally and utterly incompatible. They could not exist together. Going forward a little, we often talk about our country as a Christian country. Well, many would uh, doubt that or um, say that's not true. But in general, we say United States is a Christian country. And yet, in this country, we possess uh, thousands and thousands of nuclear weapons which are pointed at peoples all over the world and which, with a flick of a button and a matter of just minutes, could annihilate tens of millions and even hundreds of millions of innocent people around the world. Looking at this, if we base our life on the principles of Christianity, our country, United States of America, is not a Christian country. It is totally incompatible with Christianity, the possession of these nuclear weapons. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a member over 40 years with the Soka Gakkai International. And if you're not familiar with the Soka Gakkai, you soon will be. It's poised at this time to become the next great world religion. It's in 192 countries now, over 12 million members. And the basis of this uh, Buddhism, of the Soka Gakka, is the Lotus Sutra, the greatest teaching in all of Buddhism, which at its core basically reveals the eternity of life, the total sanctity of all life, and the profound and limitless potential for happiness that each individual 
innately possesses within their life already and is able to bring out through this practice of chanting the title of the Lotus Sutra, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. The first two presidents of the Soka Gakkai were two great Japanese educators, Sunesaburo Makaguchi and Jose Toda. Both went to prison in the early 1940s because of their absolute resistance to the militaristic government of Japan at that time, the war government. They refused utterly to uh, fall in line with the government, which basically and also was totally aligned with another religion, Shinto, which became the state religion, which totally supported the militaristic government of Japan. So. Toda and Makaguchi went to prison. Uh, Makaguchi, the first president, died there in jail. Toda, at the end of the war, was released, his health broken, having been tortured and uh, almost starved to death. Japan was in the ruins, and by himself he stood up to spread the principles of the Lotus Sutra. And it has spread now to the entire world. In 1958, just uh, months before his death, he assembled 50,000 youth in Japan at a meeting. And the main thrust of his talk to these youth at that time was to eliminate nuclear weapons from the face of the earth. He knew at that time there were negotiations going on around the world and movements to eradicate nuclear weapons, but he wanted to go much, much deeper than those movements. He wanted to basically tear out the claws of delusion in people who had the feeling that they somehow could press a button and annihilate millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of people's lives. People have a right to live, he said. So this movement is now spreading throughout the world. Um, if you want to read more about uh, all of this, uh, it's in my books. I have 10 other books. You, and uh, I'm traveling the United States at this time to really talk about many of these things, about a, a new vision of ourselves, a new dream of America, and a new religion for the world. Take a look, if you'd like, at my website, www.jameshilgendorf.org. Thank you. Have a great day.